Hey Thingsters and welcome to this video, it's Chris, founder of Thingster.com and in today's video you're going to learn about Python's built-in string function. So uh, it consists of three, char three characters, str, and it converts any object into a string um, representation. And you can basically apply it to really any Python, Python object and uh, so let's, have, let's start with some examples. So you, do, you can use a string function without importing any external library. So this is the beauty of the Python built-in functions that they are already available for everyone to use without importing any library. So um, and now you can already see that like the two modes of using it. So the first mode is to pass any object into it. So with the first mode is with one parameter. The second mode is with up to three parameters. And I will show you both modes in, in a moment. And I will also show you how the function works. And I think it's really important that you understand these built-in functions because those are the most important Python uh, functions that are like from the P Python's creators decided those are the functions you need in the built-in uh, library. So those are usually those are the functions that are most frequently used. That's why they decided to include it in, in the Python um, standard, sh uh, standard installation um, uh, in the first place. Okay, so the most simple use case is you pass any object like an integer into it, say the value 42, and it converts it to a string representation. You see it with this uh, indicated by these quotes. Okay, so you you um, use a string function, it's a built-in function. You pass one object like an integer object, and it converts it to a string representation. And you cannot only like you can also pass say float objects, say 3.14 for example, which is uh, value for p <laughs> approximately. Uh, so you can pass those to to a string value. You can even like uh, import numpy s and p so let's create a numpy array a just to show you that you can you can convert all types of uh, uh, data into a string by passing them into the string function now you see this is a representation of a numpy array uh, it looks like a list but it doesn't have the commas in the string representation this is like a sub subtle difference of the represent string representation of numpy arrays or strings uh, or lists so for example if we have if you would have a list lst so say of the same values one two three we could also pass the list into the string function and it would give this string representation. You, see, you now see that they have the comma, for example. So you can really like pass almost any object into, actually I think you can pass any object into the string function. And um, so you may ask, okay, how does it work? How does it convert any object? So for example, if you have custom object, uh, co custom object, how does it pass uh, the custom object into the string function? And let's have, let's open a, a, like a, um, a Python, uh, module and we create our own custom object say we create a class car and our class say has one argument like uh, so one let's make it the init function we pass self and we set self dot uh, color to say black something like this okay so maybe maybe it would be better to like uh, set it to a color and then pass the color into the constructor. So now this would have one attribute, yeah. This class car would have one attribute, and this is the color of the car. And now you can create, for example, Porsche is a car, say, uh, with black color, and then we have Tesla is a car with silver color like this yeah and now let's see what happens if we print the string representation of the Porsche object and the string representation of the Tesla object now it gives you this strange like default string um, representation the default string rep representation is just a representation of the type of the object so you, you see it's it's like the type car it's defined in the main um, uh, in the main module and uh, it shows you the memory address so this is this is like the information the dummy information that can be extracted for any python object no matter how the object actually looks like in practice so this kind of information is, is extracted by default so what if you want to create your custom string representation so uh, using the string function then you could simply override the dunder method so underscore underscore str underscore underscore and it uh, simply works on the on the instance itself and it like gives you you can now design your custom string representation for example we can have a string object say your car has the has color 
plus now we we maybe set set it to color simply okay so color is a string value so this should work okay so now we return the, the string the result of the string concatena concatenation your car has color and then then we give the color um, string and we concatenate those together so let's let's see how the string representation now looks like color is not defined I need to set it to self dot okay let's run this again Okay, now you can see that suddenly the string representation is much more beautiful. Okay, so here we have your car has color black, your car has color silver. So for example, now you could also have like a brand, for example, and and brand self dot brand. So now we like extend the string representation. Now we also must pass the brand into it. So say we pass Porsche into it and Tesla into it and now let's see how the string representation looks now self.brand self.brand we just need to set it okay so now it looks like even prettier now it is even more customized and you can you can add some additional information so this is how you can create your custom re uh, string representation using the string function so um, sometimes some objects don't have a don't have an already defined uh, dunder string method but they have defined the the dunder def representation method and this is like used as a as a fallback method. This is basically if there is no string method defined, they use the standard the representation method to give us the string representation. Okay, so say we simply have one, two, three here just to try it out. Now let's remove our um, this method and run this and now you can see okay we have over, overwritten the representation dunder method and now this is used as a fallback uh, method for the string conversion okay so like the rule is that it uses a string the dunder string method that we have already def that we have previously defined here but if uh, this is not defined then it uses a representation method so if you define both then it will use the string method like this yeah so you can see the string method takes precedence over the representation method to, uh, if you pass it into the string function okay so this is how you can use a string function on custom object like there's one more use case how to use a, um, a string method and this is like on bytes or byte arrays so you can for example create your own bytes like uh, something like this so now this is not a string you see it's prefixed with this uh, byte um, a notion, byte notation. So um, it it's like a bit different, different, more simple representation. So bytes cannot represent as many char different characters as um, strings. And now you can see, like the rep the string representation of this is just uh, like you have the outer quotes indicating that the result is a string. So we still convert the byte object into a string. But then we have this byte representation with the byte prefix. So it basically tells me. Um, this is a string, but we have passed a byte object into it. So the string representation of a byte is like this strange thing here with a uh, with a b prefix. Okay, so this is this is how you can also like uh, use the string method passing some bytes. And um, if you do this, if you pass bytes or byte arrays, you can also um, add two additional arguments. The first one is the encoding argument, and the second one is the errors argument. Okay, and the, um, these are some very specific and seldomly used uh, to be frank i have not used those myself in practice and i have not seen anyone using them but in some border cases you may want to use them and here is here is what you how you can define like you can define different types of encoding like for example encoding this uh this byte object as an utf8 which is a unicode uh representation Something like, something like this. Okay, now it looks different because now it's not an object, a byte string anymore. Now it's a real string because UTF-8 is, uh, is, a, is a real string. And you can also define other encodings here, um, like ASCII encoding and so on. ASCII is like a, the older version that has a fewer diff, fewer characters actually that can represent fewer characters. For example, you cannot represent, say, um, emojis or so, or or this German umlaut there and so. So you cannot represent some some specific characters in um, in ASCII, which you can represent in UTF-8. So UTF-8 is just a more complicated, more general way to represent more characters from from loads of different languages. Okay, so I think uh, that's enough for the string uh, string function. This is how a string function works. You have also learned how to uh, like implement your own custom string. 
um, representation by means of the of either the Danda string method or the Danda representation method. Here you you must uh, take uh, uh, so, so you must keep in mind that the string uh, method, so the Danda string method, takes precedence over the Danda representation method. Okay, thanks for watching to this video and see you in the next video. Bye.